Well, Jack, we're not even 10 episodes in to review, and now comic book movies have infested our new show as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you. It, I know, I know. I'm sorry. Hello, and welcome again to Review. Uh, this time I'm joined by Jack, and we're talking about the 1998 film Blade, starring Wesley Snipes, uh, the movie that everybody in the world has forgotten about. It, you know, there, there is the modern era of superhero movies. A, a lot of people assume it kicked off with the X-Men movies. That's what always gets the, the credit for uh, what we're still in, too. People talk about like the, the glut of comic book movies now, mm. but it, it's been going for like 20 years. It's insane. It is, it is. But like it, a little movie that snuck in before the X-Men movie, was Blade, a, an R-rated, uh, black starring... Well, he is, Wesley Snipes is black. Wesley Snipes is black. <laughs> we, we, we have a, a black main character, a black female lead, an R-rated comic book movie that, that snuck in there before the glut of family-friendly comic book movies. Well, not even just, it, it was a successful R-rated comic book movie long before Deadpool. Yep. Uh, it, it stars a, a black hero. Mm -hmm. Now everyone's talking about, like with the, the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, the, uh, they made Mary Jane black, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of diversity to the cast. Yep. And Wesley okay. Snipes was doing this shit 20 years ago. So there's that. <laughs> uh, and just successful Marvel movie, long before Marvel movies were a thing. This is actually the movie, the, the reason I really wanted to talk about this is because no one's talking about this. And Blade is the movie that convinced Marvel Studios that they could make money making movies. Before that, we had the awful Captain America movie and the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie, which, you know... And let's not forget, it's not Marvel, but as far as where comic book movies were right before Blade came out, we had Batman and Robin, <laughs> we had The Phantom. One uh, of my favorites. With Billy Zane wearing purple spandex. We had The Shadow. Which isn't technically comic book, oh, is it? That's it's kind of superhero-ish. Yeah. I think they were trying to make it in the style of mm. the popular comic book movies of the mid-90s. But we had Blank Man. <laughs> we, had, we had Meteor Man. We had Dark Man. Dark Man's the only good one. <laughs> Maybe you're misremembering Blank Man, because that was awesome. But, but so, you know, like, uh, Marvel was really bad at making movies. <laughs> <laughs> and then here comes Blade. And we get uh, early David Goyer, who now is, is running a lot of DC cinematic universe. That's another thing to point out. Yeah, all these things that started with Blade. Right. And even not necessarily uh, comic book related, but just the style of Blade. <laughs> a year later, we got The Matrix. <laughs> yeah. And... And, and trench coat, techno Black trench sword coats. fights. Yep. But yeah, so you have all of these things that existed already, and it was a super successful movie. According to Wikipedia, it had a production budget of 45 million and grossed over 170 million. Remember the days when 170 million was a hit? All these things we've just talked about, all, right. uh, all the, the, the connections to where comic book movies would go and where the visual style of the late 90s would go, and the start of David S. Goyer doing these comic movies. All of these things are way more interesting than Blade itself. It's really true. <laughs> it's really true. I, I, have, I, I was in love with Blade when I was a teenager. This, the movie came out when I was 16 years old, and I was a dumb kid who thought techno was awesome and sword fighting was awesome. <laughs> There's nothing dumb about either of those things. Techno music and swords. Techno music and swords. That was like the 90s right there. That was there. all the 90s. Isn't it weird how dated, how poorly aged the 90s cool is? Compared to other decades. 
Like there's things from the 70s that are still cool. There's mm -hmm. things from the early 2000s that are still cool, but there's that period, mm -hmm. the Matrix, black trench coat, techno music period, that is just aged horribly. It, it, all the 90s, it's uh, bad hair, uh, <laughs> baggy outfits, and Steven Dorf. <laughs> the poor man's Christian Slater. Before Christian Slater was the poor man's poor Christian Slater. Christian. Oh my God. Oh, Steven Dorf. But despite these things, because uh, I saw Blade either in the theater or when it first came out on video, I mm. saw it once, and I have literally not thought about it since. <laughs> Since I said, hey, let's talk about so Blade. Since said, hey, let's talk about Blade. And I was like, oh, yeah, that movie. Everybody has... Everybody it had two sequels. Mm -hmm. It had a TV series. Yeah. It had at least one video game. Absolutely. And nobody talks about Blade ever. The, uh, one of the sequels has heartthrob Ryan Reynolds in it. And a, a, a girl, what was her it's name? Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel. Yeah. But they let David Goyer direct Blade <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> so for some reason, it bombed. It's weird. <laughs> And oh, how about instead of that, we'll just give him the DC Cinematic Universe. <laughs> he can't mess anything up over there. Well, I'm convinced at this point, David, because David S. Goyer's written a lot, mainly comic book movies. If you look at his IMDb, mm -hmm. it's all comic book movies, except he got his start with Demonic Toys. The classic Demonic Toys. <laughs> The, the S in David S. Goyer stands for sloppy because he's a terrible screenwriter. Um, but as someone like Max Landis will point out, you know, you don't write a movie, you write a script. Right. And then where it goes after that, what the filmmakers do with it, it kind of turns into a different thing. Mm -hmm. It's its own beast. And I think the strength of a movie written by David S. Goyer is completely dependent on who is making the movie because mm -hmm. he wrote the second one too, the yeah. second Blade film, which is of course visionary filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, he wrote the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, mm -hmm. and those turned out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then he also wrote the Zack Snyder directed films, uh, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. So I, I think Davis Goyer is a hack that has just lucked out into having some interesting filmmakers make his movies. Do you know who would agree with you on that? Is David S. Goyer. Oh, okay. If, if you listen to the Blade commentary track, which I listened to last night because now I'm all back into Blade, <laughs> he, he mentioned specifically on the commentary track that he is really bad at individual scene writing and at dialogue writing. Those he, those, so the, the main elements of a screenplay, he admits he's bad at? Yeah. That's but, interesting. But what he says is, he goes, you know, for me, it's all about the structure. Like, I, I, I am really good at structure, so I can make a good superhero movie. And then, you know, the actors will fill in the dialogue. And <laughs> These the, are the, things he said? Yes. <laughs> that explains so much. Well, and uh, the, Wesley Snipes, who also produced the movie and stars in it, and the other producers on the commentary track, and they both admit, like, Wesley Snipes would figure out what the character would do to start and end a scene for every scene. And all the, like the director and the producers would go, oh yeah, that works much better. I'm getting a little tired of chopping my Thought I might try fire for a change. Give my regards to Frost. Speaking of Wesley Snipes and the character of Blade, yeah. his performance in the movie to me is is emblematic of the entire movie, mm -hmm. which is it's like 50-50 on on pretty good yeah. and and bad. You met Blade. He does a lot of the gruff talk. Mm -hmm. He's space cop, where he's super ultra serious all the time. Except occasionally he's just not. Freeze! the fuck are you out of your damn mind? Like early on he gets shot and he's like, what do you think you're doing? Or something like that. And you're like, that's what? Where'd this come from? <laughs> You have to you have to just blame it, it was uh, whoever directed Blade I forget his name uh, Stephen Norrington that was his first feature no uh, oh. he did a movie called, a low budget movie called Death Machine oh uh, and then he did, they because of the strength of that he got Blade oh okay. uh, and then he went on to do The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and he was never seen again oh how awful yeah oh 
Uh, I, I think he does a good job in Blade. Uh, as far as the visuals and the action goes, it's not overly choppy. Um, there's a lot that you can see the choreography that's mm -hmm. going on, and you can tell that there actually was choreography. Oh, it's yeah. not just super close ups, shaky cam, cut every two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the best stuff in the movie. The, the, the movie opens, it has possibly one of the strongest opens in all superhero movies ever. A rave vampire party that ends with them getting showered with blood. A, a rave vampire party that's in the back of like a meat locker. Right. <laughs> and we're being led into this world by Tracy Lords, who is like third or fourth build, and she doesn't even make it past the opening credits. Hey, I'm gonna rip your fucking head off. <laughs> and you know, here it's just vampires getting showered with blood and then disintegrating and turning into bad CG. And turning skeletons. into cartoon skeletons. <laughs> the CG in this movie has not aged well. But we do learn at the end of the movie, inside their skeletons are other tinier skeletons with little bat wings. And it just looks terrible. It just looks the worst. <laughs> I, I guess my only defense is you have to remember in 1998, we didn't have nice high definition televisions. Maybe this looked better on, uh, I'm sure it looked better on VHS. It just, oh, it, it aged so poorly. Those so what we're saying is watch Blade on your phone <laughs> and it'll look great. We get some fun monsters, we get some fun gore, like uh, Pearl. This must be Pearl, the record keeper. Which, you know, leads into a fun action sequence. We get this giant fat goblin vampire thing. Whenever I picture internet trolls, that's, that's what the, I picture is. It's Pearl. Yeah. Surrounded by monitors. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence isn't that hot. <laughs> Five out of ten. <laughs> would, would not bang. <laughs> um... I think another like fun part about this as a superhero movie, and it's something I wish would happen more often in superhero movies, is Blade is already established. This is not an origin story. Yes, yes. And how refreshing is it? <laughs> Just to see a movie where our hero does shit already, we get hints at the backstory, we get flat out exposition of the backstory later on. But Which you need, I mean, this is the introduction of this character, but we right. don't need to see First 45 minutes is establishing how he becomes who he becomes, yep. and then the second half is, uh, oh, then we have to have him fight someone. Yep, now he's fighting the villain, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's the way a lot of the Marvel movies are structured. <laughs> yeah, it, like, and maybe, maybe it's because we've forgotten about Blade. We need to bring some of this back. Yeah. We understand, superheroes are a thing now. We get it, we don't need to spend two thirds of the movie of them figuring it out. And that leads into another thing I really liked about the movie is the world building. Mm -hmm. That's a glyph. A vampire cattle brand. It means that Officer Craig is somebody's property. It's really, like, it's it's actually pretty interesting. The, the kind of hierarchy of vampires mm -hmm. where you have the purebreds and then you have the, uh, what do they call them when you're a human that gets bit and becomes a vampire? That's what Steven Dorff is and he's, he's insecure about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I, I thought, because I think it's Steven Dorff's character, what's his name? Deacon Frost, which yeah. is like the most 90s bad guy name ever. <laughs> I think he's an okay villain. Mm. I think his relationship with the the head of the vampires was more interesting than his relationship with Blade. He didn't have a relationship with Blade. Well, he, he bit his mom, whatever. Well, oh, but uh, oh, but just yeah, a... like his his insecurity about being only a half vampire, right. and, and then uh, uh, taking out Udo Kier, ripping out his vampire fangs, and making him explode in a horrible CGI explosion. Uh, 
Um, I thought all that was way more interesting than him as generic bad guy that wants to raise the blood god. Well, another thing I really liked is that the main female lead is not a love interest, mm -hmm. which I thought was nice. She's just there. And she has shit to do. Some cure. I didn't say EDTA was a cure, but maybe you could use it to explode some vampire heads. Like, so she invents a cure for vampirism. She finds a new way to explode vampires, which is kind of awesome. Which would be awesome if it wasn't for the effects. When they, they, they stab those ones and their heads bulge up and then explode. I was thinking of Big Trouble in Little China, the part when the guy expands yeah. and explodes and how much better that looked. Come on! They establish at a certain point, I can't remember the main female character's name. Karen, is that it? It is now. Blood Doctor. Blood Doctor. Uh, Whistler is talking to her. Mm -hmm and he establishes that he doesn't have much longer, he's got cancer. Yeah. <coughs> Is he sick? Cancer. And then five minutes later, he just gets killed by the bad vampires anyway. Yep. It's like, oh, why do we need him to have cancer? Are we supposed to care about him more when he dies because he had cancer? Right? Like, we already loved him as the father figure, as the, the aging gunslinger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then he dies, and then there's that fun back and forth, like, I say fun, you know, the devastating back and forth between him and Blade. And Shoot me, Blade. No. Oh, and give yeah. me your gun. All right. So then you hear him shoot himself off camera, but doesn't he come back in the sequel? He does. I was watching... <laughs> I was watching the sequel this morning. I didn't quite finish it. <laughs> he turns into a vampire. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Blade finds him and cures him of his vampirism because he has a cure for vampirism now right. because of Blood Doctor. Oh, they do carry that over. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good. And he, he joins a ragtag group of vampires hunting an even worse type of vampire in that's, Blade that's 2. The, the vagina face ones, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, vagina vampires. Yeah, so no, him having cancer... Makes no sense. <laughs> there, there, is, there is a lot of stuff that is set up and paid off. And that's what makes moments like that. Oh, yeah, Whistler's got cancer. Yeah. Oh, what's the pay? Oh, Whistler's dead. Oh, he just got killed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. And then there's just some weird lines. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate our bill. The final action uh, line of the movie, that's what we're ending with. The fuck does that even mean? Some things are hard, but people try to do them? What is, how, does that, <laughs> how does that even relate to anything we've just witnessed? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to assume that that was a, a Wesley Snipes line. Uh, actually, it's not. Oh really? They talk about it in the commentary. Uh, that's that's something that Blade or that's something that Wesley Snipes just said randomly in a meeting. Yeah. And David S. Goyer thought it was the coolest thing. Well, okay, so it did come from Wesley Snipes yeah. then. But then Wesley Snipes said, "No, we shouldn't use that in the movie. <laughs> that's just something like we you say. Yeah, that's not no, that's not a good line." And Goyer's like, "That's the line." Like, I get it. It's, it's dated. Blade is, has not aged well. Aspects of it haven't. It's still a pretty solid action movie. There's a part where Wesley Snipes, I keep wanting to call him Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Wesley Snipes rips out a guy's throat and then throws it at another guy. You're not going to see that in Ant-Man. <laughs> Paul, <Rudd. laughs> Paul Rudd. Oh, excuse me for a second. I need to borrow your throat. <laughs> this is all I'm saying. And, you know... I, we're ready now. Now with the success of Deadpool, now with the 
possibly over prolification of superhero movies, we're ready again for some gritty shit. Well, this, this movie is an example of, of, of uh, how good it is to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, there's no, back, there's no setup, no sta uh, origin story. Yeah. Uh, it's just a very simple, straightforward story. Mm -hmm. There's a couple scenes that are maybe missing, like, like how quickly she invented the serum to stop vampirism. She's like a really good blood doctor. Or how the bad guys found Blade's headquarters. Right. Um, so there's a couple scenes missing. But overall, the story itself is very straightforward and simple and yeah. not... I would say the runtime is too long. This movie's two oh. hours. Yeah. Could have trimmed a little bit of that out. It but it's, it's, like it, the movie itself doesn't feel like bloated. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very straightforward. It's a, it's a perfect like Sunday afternoon hangover movie. <laughs> <laughs> Which isn't even really a slight on the movie, because we need movies like that. Oh, you know, you can turn away, check Twitter, write some emails, come back and kind of know exactly what's going on. It's, it's a background movie, absolutely. As soon as the song that kind of sounds like Smack My Bitch Up starts, then you, then you put your phone down and you watch again. <laughs>